Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Kakiri Forest Suicidal. And uh, today, First batch of Zeds heading your way. I want to talk about to um, my disability. So, it's so loud, I, I changed my audio settings, so it's not bad for you guys. I'm, I'm thinking it's not, I don't think I changed anything that should affect you, but... <laughs> it's really loud for me. But today I want to talk about my disability. So I have uh, I have situational mutism. Well, I'm not officially diagnosed, but you know I'm I'm usually I'm usually somebody who's super anti you know self diagnosis of uh, of disabilities because I, I feel like it kind of undervalues um, the disability as a whole. And when when you're not like properly getting diagnosed and you're just kind of like diagnosing yourself, and it it, it, it kind of adds to some negative connotations uh, towards the the disability and uh, I don't I don't appreciate it um, you know but but uh, at the same time like if you have all the symptoms and you relate with with somebody who's you know got a specific disability I, th I think there's definitely merit and uh, associating yourself with with those people and then learning about how they handle situations and, and being welcomed and accepted uh, I, j I just think that confidently saying like you know I have something when you haven't actually been diagnosed with it is is uh, more problematic than helpful. However, situa situational mutism is is a uh, one of, of many exceptions to that rule because uh, I don't I don't think it takes a, a professional therapist to diagnose it. Um, <laughs> it is pretty obvious. Um, so I I can say with with like a hundred percent confidence that uh, I have situational mutism, even though it's not officially diagnosed because. What it is, is uh, in certain situations, it's technically called selective mutism, um, but that makes it seem like it's too, like, you're, you're selecting where it is, whereas it's in select situations. Um, I prefer the term situational mutism, just because it's, like, less, it's less, uh, like, misleading, I guess, to, to people who don't know that select has, like, multiple ways of being used it, it, it just it, it makes people think that that you're choosing to be mute with them when you say you have selective mutism um, anyway uh, in, in 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 certain situations uh, I cannot talk so that that's most of them I can talk with my sister usually um, I can talk with my grandparents usually uh, I can talk with you guys don't have a problem with that and I can talk with, uh, I can talk with, um, what, what should I call it? Uh, with, with my friends on, on the Raymeter Discord. That's, that's about it. That's, that's almost, like, exactly it. I can also talk on stream, but I consider that to be the same as, like, you know, you guys. Um, and that's it. Like, if I go to a grocery store, if I go to get my, um, Hello? If I go to get uh, like prescription filled at the pharmacy, if I'm talking to my parents, uh, if I'm talking to a cashier at the bank, you know, police, somebody phones me, like I can't, I, I almost always cannot talk. And you might be like, hey, you got a phone call the other day on, on camera and you were able to talk. Yeah, that was surprising. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't even like think about it. I just like answered the phone and talked. And then afterwards I was kind of like, wait a minute, how did I do that? <laughs> um, I, I normally can. Normally when, when I get a phone call like that, I just leave it and then they send me an email like, Hey, uh, we couldn't get in touch with you. They don't have this thing. What would you like instead? And then I respond to them. But uh, for some reason, I was just like, I picked it up and I was just talking to them. And I'm like, wait a minute. Something seems weird here. Um, so yeah, I, I normally cannot talk to, to in most situations. My, my sister is a usually I can talk. And then my parents are a never. I cannot talk with them unless I... Uh, Marijuana basically removes the limitations, and I can talk with whoever. Um, anyway, that's that's situational mutism. So it's like, do I have to get an official diagnosis if I if I need like professional help for it? Yes, because you're not like officially diagnosed, and you're not officially going to get help. But um, at the same time, for me to be like, yes, I have situational mutism, I don't think I have to get a diagnosis. I'm, it's. I, I literally, I am literally mute with, with most people that I talk to, or, you know, don't talk to. I don't think I need a diagnosis to, to say that I am mute. Um, 
Because I cannot talk. Anyway. When you have a disability that takes away such a, like, fundamental part of existence for humans, like, you know, you're blind and you can't see, or you're deaf, you can't hear, you, you, you can't feel, you can't talk, um, you know, like, something that's just, like, so fundamentally, you know, standard for, like, all humans. Um, when you have a disability that takes that away, people who don't have to deal with that, you know, like most people who are just regular old human beings, they cannot possibly understand what it's like. You, you as you, you listening to this, if you've never been mute, uh, it is, uh, situational mutism is something that can be, like, fixed, um, uh, because it, it stems from anxiety rather than a physical problem, um, so if I work on those anxieties, then I'll be fine. I think my anxiety is, uh, typically because, uh, my voice is still pretty masculine and I'm pretty uncomfortable with that, so I think my anxieties are, are stemming from that. So once I, uh, finish my voice, I should be, like, good to go again, I think. That's, that's my idea, so I haven't bothered seeking professional help yet because it would be very expensive, and I'm like, I'm gonna seek professional help. I'd rather just seek professional vocal help, um, <laughs> than, like, train my voice that way. And uh, probably end up getting over this situational mutism anyway. Uh, but, um, people who have never dealt with it cannot understand what it's like. You just, you can't. Uh, because it's such a fundamental thing that you take for granted. When we have to live with it, you know, you have to come up with, you have, you have fears and anxieties and and uh, solutions that you will not come up with when you just think about it for like a day or two or a week or something like that. Like if you try and do a challenge where you don't talk for a week to anybody, you're completely mute and you have to come up with sol solutions, you'll be like, dang, that sucked. <laughs> Guarantee you will not enjoy it. Um, but you, you still wouldn't know what it's like because at the end of the day, you just get to go back to talking. You know, you don't have any fear where, like, if you get pulled over on the side of the street, how are you going to explain to the police that you're not a criminal? You know, because, like, if you get pulled over, you're not going to keep pretending you can't talk. You're just going to talk. You know, if, if 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 somebody, you know, mugs you and asks for all your money, like, how do you communicate? Like, you know, like, like all of these anxieties and fears, you're not going to have those. Um... And uh, so you just, you just, you cannot understand what it's like. You, you can be respectful and, like, understanding that, like, it's hard. And, like, you know, it's not, like, gatekeeping. Like, you can't understand my pain, but, like, you can't. Just like I can't understand, you know, what it's like to be blind. I can't understand what it's like to be deaf. I can't, you know, th these are just things that you take for granted as a, as a person because they're so normal and natural in everyday life that, uh... Just, just thinking about, like, not having it, it's not gonna give you enough information about what it's like to not have it to actually understand what it's like to not have it, you know what I mean? Anyway, what that basically boils down to is that even the people closest to you, family, friends, you know, employer, employee, like, fellow co-workers, you know, even, even the people you consider to be closest in your life are not going to be able to completely respect it as much as, as you would like or even as much as they would like because they just can't understand it they can't and it's not their fault they they they've never been mute they don't know what it's like to be mute um so so you'll often get things that are just like super super insensitive and they don't even know that it's so insensitive you know they won't even know um what happens a lot is people, people like, ask me a question, and then I can't respond because I can't talk to them, you know? <laughs> like, what do you, what do you want me to say? I can't say anything. My, my, my three words are nod, shake my head, and shrug. I can say yes, no, or eh. <laughs> those are the three words I have. So when you ask me a question that's, that's not answerable by those, uh, I can't answer it. And, and people often get mad, right? People often get mad that I'm not answering their question, and then and then they'll start asking more questions, or, or, or uh, you know whatever. And it's like I still just can't answer your question. 
your questions cannot be answered, you know? And uh, they just get more mad, and I'm like, I'm just asking for the time. You know, it, it didn't have to turn into the big thing. Like, uh, what happens on occasion is uh, I'll, I'll want to know, like, how long somebody's going to be in the bathroom for. Like, you know, is this a, I can just wait up here, or should I, like, go do something for, like, a half an hour while you shower? I don't know. Um, so I'll knock on the door, and they'll be like, what do you want? Oh. <laughs> what do you... <laughs> All, the only communication I have right now is Nox, so I need you to give me a little bit more than that. Um, and then, you know, they'll get mad that I'm knocking on the door and, like, rushing them or whatever. And it's like, but I just want to know how long you're going to be, you know? Like, you can just ask a yes or no question in response, right? Like, I'm just going to be a minute. Can you wait? And I'll, I'll, I'll wait. You know, and if it's important, then I'll keep knocking. You'll be like, all right, well, you can't wait. Like, it's important. I guess I should go check on it, right? But you won't do that. You won't. Because to you, being able to talk, you know, to my family, to, to anybody, being able to talk is so fundamentally normal that even though it's me who can't talk, and even though I'm like family, you're not gonna you're not gonna think of it. You're just not. And it's like you know, how how can I be particularly mad by it? Because it, it's they, they can't possibly, like, understand. Um, but at the same time, it's, like, super, super inconvenient. The, num the number of times I get asked questions. Like, my mother will all the time ask, like, what do you want for dinner? And I'm like, alright, I'll just shrug. And I might have something that I want, you know? Like, I might I might want Subway. I might want, you know, soup. I might, I might want a stir-fry. Like, there might be something that I have in mind that I want, but I can't say it. You know, so I'm just gonna shrug. Be like, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, and then, then and then she might say, okay, so you're just good with anything, and I might not be. <laughs> you know, um, and uh, you know, she'll so she'll be like, all right, well, I guess we can have spaghetti or something then, and I'll be like, I don't want that. So I'll I'll, you know, say no, and she'll be like, well, what, which is it? And it's like, well, I need I need yes or no questions. You know. Or, or, like, give me a moment to, to find something to write on or something, you know? Or just let me be on my own. But, like, I just, you, you, just, you just get asked so many questions that aren't yes or no. And I just, I just have to think every time somebody asks me a question that isn't a yes or no answer. Like, what are you expecting me to say? <laughs> what, are you, what are you expecting to get in response to this? When, when you ask a question that can't be answered with a, with a like, nod or a shake... What are you what are you expecting to get in return? But it happens all the time. And every time I'm just like What are you thinking I'm gonna do? <laughs> Am I just gonna suddenly start talking? Cause I, I can I spoiler, it's not gonna happen. It just will not happen. So like what are you what are you trying to get out of me here? Like it it happens uh like what game should we play? What do you want me to say in response to that? You know, best case scenario, I'll go like find a board game that I play. But if I if I wanted to play like a card game or something, like you know, SOL. <laughs> you know, like it's uh, I I can't communicate that. So so when people are asking like questions and stuff, it's and you know you you can go through the hassle of of finding something to write on and and doing all that. But sometimes it's just not worth the hassle. You know, and I'll just I'll just do the quickest thing I can because I'm like well what I want is too complicated to explain um, you know it might be a game that I've learned like you know somebody might ask like oh what game should we play and I'll be like well there's a game that I'd like to play but I have to like teach you and I can't talk so how am I gonna teach you <laughs> and it's not even like their fault like it's it's especially my fault at that point but it's just so inconvenient and people just they don't get it you know like I'll, I'll get asked you know, it, it just it, it's so annoying it's it's the most annoying thing in the world when people ask me a question that's not yes or no especially when it's something that like doesn't matter you know because if it's something that matters okay yeah it's, it's worth me going and like finding a piece of paper and then writing on it and answering the question okay it's yes you know like hey when 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 when's good to, to go visit uh, you know the grandparents or something you know like yes this this is important we have to discuss this I'll go find a paper and 
you know, we'll, we'll communicate, right? That's okay. But when you're just asking something dumb that just doesn't have a purpose, really, it's like, I don't really care to go grab a paper and, like, write this down for you just so that you can know what kind of sushi I want for dinner. Like, I'd rather just order my own. <laughs> the delivery fee is not that expensive. And it's a heck of a lot easier for me to just do that. Or, like, just give me your phone and, like, I'll type it in. Like, like, it just... It, 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 it hurts, honestly, when, when people ask questions like that, that, that are open-ended, and it's like, what do you, what, what are you, what are you expecting me to do? Like, have, have you, have you not realized by now, it's been a while, a very long while, have you not realized yet that, like, I cannot talk? I cannot answer your question? Anyway, it's the same thing with, with, I'm sure, like, I'm not blind or deaf or whatever, but I'm sure it is the same thing with, with, uh, with anything. Like, there's, there's just aspects that, that people are just not gonna get. You know? Like, I'm sure if you're blind, your family members, even when you're, like, mid-30s, are probably gonna be like, Hey, did you see that thing the other day? They might be, like, in their mind or whatever. They might be thinking about, like, you know, did you watch it with the, you know, visually, visual assistance or whatever, you know? Um... But it's just like maybe, maybe for you that that kind of irks you, you know. And uh, maybe, maybe it irks you, but it's not quite worth like making a big deal out of it. So you just leave it. I don't know. Like, like who knows? I'm not, I'm not blind. I don't know what's what's like making blind people mad. But I'm sure there's something, right? Because people just can't understand. They can't. And it's not their fault. It's not a bad thing that they can't understand. It. It just means that when. You have somebody in your life who is disabled and is missing something so, like, fundamentally standard. Like, just just take the little bit of time to think, you know? Like, when you're interacting with them, just just take a, a, a second to think, you know? How, how is this going to be affecting them, you know? You don't have to, like, walk on eggshells around them, okay? Just, just think. When you're talking to a mute person and you ask them what they want for dinner, how are they going to answer you? You know? Like, just, just think for a moment about the, the person you're talking to. You know, when, when you ask a... When, when, when a mute person is knocking on the bathroom door, just think for a moment. How are they going to respond when you ask them what they want through the door? You know? Like, just, just take a, a moment to... You don't have to walk on eggshells. You know, be rude all you want. I'll, 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 t I'll, I'll, I'll tell you off, but like... Just, just, just spend a moment thinking about about the person you're talking to, and how what you're saying is going to affect them. Because it'll probably affect them in ways that you might not think of at first. Because chances are, most people are pretty reasonable and uh, able to tell that if you ask an open-ended question to a mute person, they're not going to be able to respond. Most people can probably, you know, get that just from the fact that I can't speak. And uh, you know, most people are probably going to know that that you shouldn't like. You know, ask a blind person if they saw the owl that just flew by, because they can't see. Uh, of course they didn't see it. You know, you shouldn't ask a deaf person if they hear the alarm going off, because they can't hear. But, but so many people will just blurt something out because they're not thinking about it, right? Because it's so fundamental that, like, when the alarm goes off, like, hey, do you hear something? You know, it's just, it's like... It's, it's just habit, right? It's so part of, of you what you do with it that like you've done it thousands of times you hear the alarm wait what, do you hear something like what's that sound you know they can't hear you they, they can't hear it you know it's just uh just just take a moment to to think about the person you're talking to think about the people you're with and and what you're saying and i can't speak for blind people or deaf people i'm sure i'm i i can say with confidence that uh they probably get annoyed by uh, by people uh, on occasion, not uh, not quite remembering that like they're blind or deaf and, and can't see or hear or whatever. Uh, but I can't I can't say for for certain like what what aspects of it are, are going to be particularly bad for them, or what might be a uh, a particular you know stick and stone or, or whatever. Like what 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 in particular is is like bad and annoying for them? Like what what 
specific ticks do they have that, that, that kind of annoy them, you know? Um, but I can speak for mute people because I am... Like, I can see, I can speak for people with situational mutism anyway. Um, because I am situationally mute. That's so why I, I can talk for, for people like me. Because I am people like me. Um, and I just, I just, I ask that when you're talking to somebody who is mute, okay, just don't ask them questions that can't be answered with yes or no if they don't have something on them to respond with, you know? Like, if I have my phone on me and you want to ask a question, I can just type it into my phone and, like, you know, text to speech it. That's okay. But if I'm, like, just coming out of the shower or something, or if I'm, like, just getting into the shower, I don't have my phone on me, I don't have, like, a book or something, like, just... Just yes or no questions. And, and the worst part of all, if I don't answer your question, that isn't a yes or no question, because I can't answer it, because I'm mute and can't talk, what, what did you expect me to do? Don't get mad at me for not answering it. That happens all the time. P people get mad that I'm not answering the question. I'm like, what did you expect from me when you asked me a question that I can't answer? Like, how did you expect me to respond? What, 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 what part of the yes, no, and I don't know would would help you get an answer out of out of that? You know, like we're just gonna keep tanking these because uh, this guy's annoying. Just, um, just, 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 you know, when, when you're talking to a mute person, make, make sure they have some way to respond if you ask them a question, okay? So that's all I ask. I don't think it's a big ask, you know? I don't think it's a big ask. I think it's a, I think it's a small ask, you know? When I'm outside, I typically have my phone on me. So I'll be able to respond. When I'm at home, I don't always have my phone on me because I would expect my family, at least, to know that, like, hey, just ask me yes or no questions or, like, you know, don't get mad <laughs> if I don't answer. You know? I, that, that, like, I, I, I get really annoyed when people ask me questions I can't answer. And it makes me just so unbelievably, like, livid when people get mad at me for not answering a question that I couldn't answer. Because it's like... What do you, you expect? You know? Like, what would you expect? And, you, and you, pe people will often be like, well, why don't you just, like, always have your phone on you? And, and it's... Why do I have to, like, inconvenience myself for, for other people? You know what I mean? It's not like it's inconveniencing them to not ask me a question I can't answer. You know? It doesn't, it doesn't inconvenience them. In fact, it conveniences them because now they don't get mad. <laughs> it's it's not like the only solution here is that I always have my phone on me. You can also just ask questions I can answer and then uh, not end up getting mad at me. Or like at least understand if I can't answer your question that like I can't answer your question. Give me a moment to like find something or something. Don't just like get mad and start yelling and stuff. Like it, the, the whole mute thing comes from anxiety. Like if you just add to the anxiety, it's just going to get worse. Anyway, that's uh, my ramble on situational mutism. Just, like, be nice to people, you know? And if somebody has a disability, like, don't get mad at them for it. Like, really just don't get mad at them for it. Don't get mad at blind people for not seeing you. Don't get mad at deaf people for not hearing you. Don't get mad at mute people for not responding to you. Don't get mad at, you know, people without legs for not being able to keep up with you. Like... Just, just, you know, you don't have to, like, go out of your way to be respectful to them. But just, like, understand that certain things are harder. They might have trouble with certain things. You don't have to necessarily, like, help or, like, you know, go out of your way to be a, an altruistic citizen. Just, like, understand that they have problems with it. So if, like, you know, I mess it up or something like that, like, it's not the end of the world. You know, like, just be like, I, you know. Because you can go the other way, too, right? Like, you, you can be too nice about it and make me uncomfortable, too. It's like, all right, well, I don't really want to be around you because you're kind of weird. <laughs> you know? Like, I just want to be treated like a normal person. Just, like, don't ask me questions again. answer. Anyway, that's going to do it. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like. Subscribe to see more of the future. Comment if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.